Hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Anne Kruijt and I'm the host for today's talk. If you are participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation or ask a voice question by raising your hand once the presentation is complete. Today's speaker is Amani Lucikelo. Amani is an associate professor in the Department of Languages and Literature at the Dar es Salaam University College of Education. He holds a PhD in African Languages and Literature from the University of Botswana. His research interests include the morphology and syntax of Greek Swahili, language use in rural Tanzania, language contact in Africa, and anthropological linguistics of non bantu languages of Tanzania. Among other things, he's currently working in a project titled uh, An Ethno-Linguistic and Eco-Criticism Study of the Hatsabe Names of Medicinal Plants at the University of Dar es Salaam. Uh, please join me in welcoming Amani today as he gives his talk on plant nomenclature and ethnobotany of the Hatsabe Society of Tanzania. Th thank you for the introduction. Mm, this heading is the title I propose for a small booklet, booklet I want to write about mm, the uh, about local biodiversity of the Hadza in all the Hadza four regions. Mm, and I want to share what so far I have done mm, for the last 12 or so months in, in which I visited Hadza mm, settlement sites and began collecting names of the plants and the cultivated crops and their utilities, if any. And I would like to, to write a, a book which is more or less usable to local community. So I'll have lines which are in Kiswahili. I will have names. I'm striving to have names in Hadza. Perhaps if I obtain an equivalent name in Kiswahili and English, and maybe I'll have a botanical name or a scientific name if I obtain uh, some and I have managed to collect, uh, collect some. And I'm motivated by the previous work um, produced by um, Ludwig, Ludwig Kochen Dassen, is a German scholar, and um, I'm sure I have made him pronounce the, uh, the name badly, but I don't speak German. I was in the position to read through the book, observing on the images provided in the book, and some parts and names provided in the book. And to me, the book is old, but it looks like its utility is still up to date. And as oh, if I'm a local researcher, and I have been working with the Hadza for some time, and they feel it important to have images of plants, uh, their names, their scientific names, and their utilities for the future. Perhaps in the next 50 years, someone will find it useful uh, uh, to use. And uh, I, I must say right from the first slide that um, I have gathered some information which I think is useful. But there are a number of other lines which I think I have not managed to obtain required information. So research will go on until the end of 2021, because now I have also another funding, small funding, to do the same work in um, amongst the Sukuma and Nyamwezi. And I focus in the villages where both the Sukuma and the Hadza live. So I keep on collecting more names. And up to this point, I have some 208 plant images and they are Hadza names and they have utilities for many of these plants. I'll share with you when I say utilities, what I, what I mean, but I usually mean, is it medicinal? Is it a source of food? Is it used to make traditional multi, maybe I would say, to borrow the South African term? Mood to protect oneself within the African way of thinking about protection. And in the first chapter of the book, 
which will bear that noun, plant nomenclature and ethnobotany of the Hadzabe Society of Tanzania. Maybe the name nomenclature may also get out. We, we may discuss about that. So in the first chapter, I talk about folk taxonomy and the ethnobotany uh, uh, information which is available in East, Eastern Africa. And I try to read as much as possible and just keep on reading with the recent publication by Cassidy Reger, a paper and another paper which was shared about the origin of agriculture in uh, Eastern Africa. They all uh, uh, give me more new information about um, folk taxonomy and ethnobotany in East Africa. So I have a number of works which I would not say I'll present here quickly and uh, get whatever I have written, but Bent Heine and his team have a, a list of books, which to me are very useful. Mm, and one of which is this one, Heine and Heine, and uh, produced in 1988, Plant Concepts and Use. And the title goes on, but it is about the Chamus, Chamus, or Chamus people of Guinea. And then mm, the, uh, a, a book by Heine and Legel about the soil plants, which is also within the series that Bent Heine organized and a number of publications by Cassin Regel on Vidunda, Bantu, and Henry Muzari on the Dictionary of Plant Names of the Higher Speaking People. They are, from, I would say, linguistic point of view, they are done by people who are engaged in African linguistics. But on the other hand, we have people who are botanists or pharmacists, but they do research in East Africa. And I'm happy this Halima Amir, who works in at Dar es University College of Education, and I and another colleague uh, uh, obtained that second funding for documentation of the names of names and utilities of plants amongst the skuma. And um, a South African scholar or Kenyan Darhan, Darhan, and she has two books. Uh, I'm trying to uh, obtain some of the inspirations from uh, her publications and more publications, which talk about folk taxonomy and the utility of plants in Eastern Africa. And uh, amongst the Hadzabe, there are a number of uh, publications which deal partly with ethnobotany. Um, if you grab a book by James Woodburn in 1970, it talks about utilities of some plants, either creation of arrows or um, extraction of um, um, poison for hunting arrows. Or if you grab a dissertation by Vincent which documents uh, about edible tubers. I put all these authors in the um, first chapter to try to um, explain about folk taxonomy. I also have further um, readings. Um, oh, the, the person I quote regularly, Frank Marlow and the, um, um, Peterson on the anthropology of the Hatsa and they have a list of names there. The orthography is questioned, but yeah, they help seeing in some point, say in Peterson, I could see an image of a plant and its name. So it makes it easier to identify plants. And there are volumes by so a book by Blatton Jones and the other anthropologists who are discussing the Mm, food and hunting uh, habits of the Hadza. And in the way they contribute towards my understanding of plant nomenclature and the utility among the Hadza, and I put them in the first chapter. And again, quickly, I will highlight that James Woodburn, at a point or so in the late uh, early 1960s, had gathered. In, 
uh, uh, medicine professionals and worked with them to examine diseases and medicines among the Hadza. And um, I'm interested to see what diseases did they find. And it is very interesting to me to notice that they appear to suggest in these literatures, three of the journal articles I have read, they appear to suggest that we don't have a medicine mayor, man amongst the Hadza. Uh, simply because it appears that any mature Hadza person will know that tree X is used to cure um, um, disease Y, or tree A is used to cure um, disease B. So in a way, um, there isn't a medicine man, but in, when I go to Yedachin or Mongwamon, I would feel that some of the elderly persons are more knowledgeable about medicinal utilities of plants of the Hatsa. And uh, uh, I point out somewhere in the monograph that um, although it is true that there are no specified person, medicine men, but of course, there are people who are more knowledgeable than the other. That is chapter one. Chapter two, I'll talk about the Hadza land and the number of existing information. I'm not expert in geography or climatology or physical orientation. So I borrow most of the ideas from the existing literatures. And I'm lucky to have visited four of the Hadza zones in Simeu, uh, in Simeu, if you see the map at the center, that is Simeu uh, uh, region, and that is the point where you have Dundohina uh, Hadza. And this, I think that image was taken at Shushuni village, which is part of Dundohina. Uh, and this is mm, mm, uh, Singida in Mkarama district, where you have the Klika Kli, Kli, uh, 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 Hadza uh, around Mwengeza, Mwengeza ward, and this is Kipamba village. Oh, this is Yaidachini, Zahanati ya Yaidachini. Um, and this is Mongo Amono. But both Mongo Amono and Yaidachini will be representing this Ponga Hadza. And if a colleague of mine. Mm, mm, okay, I'll, I'm afraid to say a student, but a, a colleague of mine, the department mm, was involved in collecting data, and I assigned him to go and work with Maria Mwanyawire. And I explained about that in chapter. Yeah, in chapter two. And mm, Towards the end of chapter two, I also talk about um, Berlin's classifications of plants in which he suggests that you always have a unique beginner, which is a label that uh, stands for all vegetation in a given place and the name plant, maybe plant in, in English. I do not recall what the uh, um, Legel and the Bent Highness suggested for Swahili, maybe Mimea or Water. But in Kazwa, well, you have city. City. Mm. Uh, city, which I, would, I want to suggest that that stands for the vegetation cover, but it will also mean a tree. So for the unique beginner, I'm proposing city. And um, I want to see how you feel it. How do you see about that suggestion I want to make? That the left, the noun city uh, stands for tree, uh, for the life form, unique beginner, sorry, unique beginner. For the life, form, life forms, I suggest five categories of life forms. So first we have city, and it's plural city B, which is a reference to trees. And the trees are different from tiki, 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 
this one um saying for sure uh, the way I pronounce is not correct and that stands for shrubs and thickets and a new term makalea mm -hmm. was coined in mongwamono to stand for climbers and creepers uh, and now is there it stands for grasses and herbs and the which is also a term which is coined to re refer to cultivated plants. Mm, I want your opinions on this classification. And that is the intent for me to share what I'm thinking about plant utility and plant names of the Hadza. So uh, this is the uh, classification I want to adopt. And each of these life forms obtain a chapter in the book. And I want to share these chapters today. I will share them quickly. Mm. That is chapter three, it stands for trees. And the trees, um, if I, you, I observe ideas from um, bot, uh, uh, botany, they will always have a uh, a stem, a, stem a, a, a little bit large stem, uh, one stem, they grow in one stem right from the ground. And this example, Bilisico, Bilisico, which is sometimes called Bilisico, is an example of a tree. This uh, large one, if you see my slide, that will be a tree. And the label for this life form will be CTBE or CTPE, depending on the speakers. And I'm happy, uh, uh, bond sons have it as sit, sit, sit. This one, this one uh, I took it from bond sons. And uh, um, in the collection of um, the CTPE as a left form, I obtain uh, above 40 vernacular names of plants. So within the semi-arid area ar around the lake areas, there are mm, mm, about 40 or plus mm, mm, trees and mm, each has a name. And in most cases, each will have some utility and some will not, but most of them have utilities. And in the book, uh, yeah, I want to show the Hadza name as I show here in the first column. So the Hadza name will come first. And then uh, as I'm also interested in contact linguistics, I want to figure out where is this name coming from? Is it native, a native name, a typical Hadza name? Is it from Bantu languages? Is it from Nilotic languages? So um, I tried to compare with um, Sukuma, Nisanzu, but mainly Sukuma, and the, um, partly now since we are involved in the Datoga project, Datoga names and the Korea Mdoi had corrected many Datoga names. And I would now and then ask about Datoga names for the members of the Datoga project at the University of Dar es Salaam. Mm, and this is this column is to check the contact situation. And in um, some cases, I have obtained botanical names, and I have given uh, uh, the list of names and the images to the people in the biological sciences at, the, at Dar es Salaam University College of Education. They are assisting me to check the, the names, but the utilities now. That is very central to me. If we say medicinal plant, which part of the plant is used? Is it bugs, leaves, roots, or the whole of it? And how do you use it? Do you chew? Do you boil? If you boil, we assume the hearts are we are not boiling sometime. Is it an, a new phenomenon or what? And which part is more, oh, sorry. Uh, which tree receives so many uses? 
that is the interest of this column. Say so now, if I want to check one tree, uh, I'll use say this one, say say which I was told is comifora, chimperi, and the inner part, the soft inner part, um, is used. Do I see here? Yes, the, the inner part is used to cure stomach problems. So the, this knowledge is that you take the inner part, you take bugs, then the inner part of the bugs. That is the point where you have the medicinal value of the entire plant. I have not yet decided whether Hanksea is a native name or is a borrowed name. I will take another example, Hogoyo, Hogoyo, which to me it looks like native. Maybe because I have not found name, such names in Hadza or Datoga. Maybe it is also from Nisanzu. I'm not, I wonder why I didn't put a question mark. Uh, but the uh, Baroness Egyptica, I have seen that in the existing literature, and it produces edible berries. And with the study of the Hadza food stuff substances, that should be um, perfectly examined. Um, before I move to another um, slide, um, may I talk about Okay, Nalako, which I find it in Skuma is in Nalo, Nalo, that is the name of the plant. And it is a, 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 a species of acacia. And for this tree, you, you take bugs, the whole of bugs, and they are hard bugs. And the, you chew it for treating chest problems or coughing. This is the kind of information I share for plants and they have 41 plants and I've shared a few, a few in this slide. And the second life form, which I suggest is a group of which is a category of uh, uh, plants which are characteristically shrubs and thickets. And in, in the literature, I see this one, and the rest, and the speakers will pronounce one and leave the other, but the, uh, to me is conclusively a, a single word. And the shrubs will cons, cons, com, uh, uh, concern, they will grow, many stems will grow from the ground. That is the classification that I was informed in the Department of Biological Sciences at Delsam University College of Education. The main feature is that they will grow, many uh, uh, stems will grow from the ground. And the Congo uh, is an example of that. Uh, the, this image I'm sharing here, and of course, uh, this image is from Mongo Amono. And uh, it appears that many of the plant species in the area are of this character. They are shrubs and thickets. And they had, at this moment, I have 70 plus, 70 plus names and utilities from all the four regions of the Hadza. And I'm sharing a few here. The, the same purpose, the first column, the Hadza name, so that we know the name in Hadza. The second name, the linguistic status, is it a, a foreign word, is it a native word? And all that has information about the Hadza and their relationship with their neighbors. The botanical name, mm, which is another business which is difficult to finish. And Cassandra uh, mm, mm, is saying, if people in science have not finished that, 
how what will how would the indigenous people finish uh, having labels for their plants and the utilities so shrubs and the thickets also have um, several utilities and i will share oh maybe i should begin from the bottom Ochea. I suggest it's a native name because even in the research I see the click and the botanical name is Combritum. Combritum. Oh, this one I can't pronounce, even this one I'm not sure. But its roots, Ochea, its roots are used to treat sexually transmitted diseases. Maybe I should also try to pronounce this one. And I suggest it's a native name with clicks. I have not yet obtained a scientific name and even the existing literature, I have not seen a book or an article containing the scientific name for that. But its roots are used to, could be mixed with water and given to children to cure stomach problems and worms and scaries in the children. So I find it useful. And the label they use for worms and their scaries, um, the hearts always tell me in Swahili, Miziziyake, Nidawa, Ya, Michango, Michango. And the label Michango is, yeah problematic to feed, so I'll treat it as worms and scurries. Mm, maybe I should also talk of Mobogo and Mohelako, which I found in Nisanzu, at Mwengeza, two of the Nisanzu people as an old, or Mobogo and Mohela are in uh, Nisanzu as well. So I'm wondering whether they are Nisanzu by origin or their hearts are Mm, and I'm um, lucky they both have botanical names, but Mobogo, its roots are consumed to cure body pain, but Mohelako had edible fruits. Mm, Makaleabe, mm, I should confess that this label which I want to treat as a representation of all plant species as which have the feature climber or creeper or tuber. So um, climbers will be plants which grow thin or um, mostly thin plants which grow on to other plants. Um, creepers will be um, plants which grow on the surface they have stems which grow on the surface. They get elongated on the surface. Tubers will be either a climber or creeper with a tuber at the as a root. And in most cases, it will be an edible tuber. And there are only a couple of that of those trees. Makealabe. Uh, the label Makealabe was uh, was suggested to me by. Um, um, a young speaker in Mongo Amono, the son of Wendeko Wendeko. Yeah, I see it, yeah. To me, he said, it's a situation in which one plant uh, ties the other. It's like you're tying one another of the plants. And there are only a couple of these. They are not even 20. So I don't have a list. It's, yeah. And this, uh, so you have, oh, uh, Hatla. Atlatlabia and oh, I can't pronounce those two. Uh, but we ha I have a chapter for those, a small chapter for Makelabi uh, plant, uh, crime bars and creepers and tubers. Then NRP for grasses and herbs. And in this chapter, I treat NRP in most cases as will be seasonal plants. Season in the sense that they will grow during rain season and they may become dry during dry season. And 
the word NAPE is also standing for grass as a, a name, but it may also include other herbaceous uh, plants. I think this is a tinginia, and this one is embe, embe odako. Uh, this one is embe odako, which is, I'll treat that as grass. And itinginia, I'll treat that as a uh, herb like. Mm. You may help me rename these um, classifications. And they have uh, more than 70 names of uh, uh, grasses and herbs. And in this case, hair, uh, grasses and shrubs are numerous in the same area region, and the Hadzide assigned several names to these uh, plant species. And uh, as usual, I have a list of the Hadza names. Mm, like Gijajako, uh, which uh, uh, that is the label I obtained in Sungu, uh, in Dunduhina. Mm, but we also have Ki, Kijajako from Mongo Amono. Mm, I have not yet obtained a botanical name. And mm, fruits are stringed on the rest to cure body pain, fruits of the gijajak are stringed on uh, uh, reds to cure body pain, mm. or giringiako, uh, which is an aloe vera. Mm. Uh, in Sukuma, it is, uh, oh, why do I forget? Mm. Oh, I remember it. But uh, I, I was told yeah, among from other diseases, the cures, the sexually transmitted diseases are highly treated using this plant. Mm. I showed you it in Guinea. Mm. I have to put a question mark here. Is it a native name or is it a loan? And I have not yet seen it in Sukuma. And this name Witingnia was gathered in Sukuma land in Tunduhina. Mm. Yeah, and the whole of the plant is used to treat measles. I, I want to move to uh, Semea, which is, I have already used 30 minutes. Since I want to receive many uh, 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 input from you, I'll move to an, another slide. Mm, Semea, which is another life form, which I propose that it covers um, crop names. And I should have brought tubers here, but yeah, tubers will go to uh, herbs. So Semea stands for um, some in the list I have some borrowed um, cultivated crops, and it is obvious they, they are likely to borrow because farming was not the engagement. And uh, this is Haguko, which is a, maybe a loan from um, Iraq, and this is Poyoko. I have not yet found the origin of Poyo, Poyoko, but the crop itself was not grown by the Hadzam but the, the name Poyoko, I have not yet found it. Uh, yeah, okay. it's source. So I'm still struggling. Mm, in the conclusion, I want to make uh, only three observations. Number one, mm, to me, the Hadza really ha mastered the utility of the uh, local biodiversity in the uh, 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 region. And I thought initially, when I was studying about crop names of the Hadza, I thought the Hadza didn't have enough names for crops, uh, for plants. But with the wild plants, they have yeah, a good number uh, uh, of names for plants with utilities. And at this point, yeah, in, in this monograph, I have the images. And I have, as I have said, I want to show the vernacular names, the Hadza names. Well, uh, I usually, uh, uh, in, I want to indicate the classification 
as provided by the speakers, but I should confess that I want to use, I use, I draw a conclusion from at least one speaker from each region. And for the names, um, uh, in Karatu is Maria Manyawire, in Yedachine, I, I use Milimo, um, in Kipamba, I use Rebecca, and in uh, 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 Sungu, I use um, Catalina. So the only classification, whether this is a herb or, 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 or not, uh, I use a, a statement that comes from um, these speakers because it, uh, they will always have a discussion whether it's a tree or it's, it's, a, it's, a, ha, it's a herb or yeah. So, so the conclusion is based on these four speakers. And on the influence of neighbors, uh, should we say that now I have found four, almost four of the Hadza names in Kisukuma, and one of which is mm, uh, Midushi, mm, in Meatu, Midushi. Uh, I presume it comes from Ondosh, which is the same tree, and um, Mangalita in Kisukuma, Mangalita, um, which is Mak Makalit, Makalita in, in Hadza. Um, to me, with these plant names, which are their names have penetrated into Jinaki uh, Sukuma, which is spoken in Meadu, they sometimes call it Jina Meadu. Um, um, the penetration of the names of the uh, edible crops is, I will assume it happens during famines which occur in Hadza villages. And the Sukuma um, had to learn um, about the utility of wild plants from the Hadza, because the Hadza have the mastered that uh, knowledge. And, and I think I should stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Amani, for your really interesting presentation. With that, we can begin with the question and answer section. So the question and answer section will be open to voice questions as well as written ones. If you would like to ask a question, just raise your hand using the nonverbal controls, which are present underneath the participant panel, and I will send you a request to unmute. If you prefer to ask a written question, that's also still possible, just do so using the Zoom chat module. As usual, I will read out the question. Please remember that the webinars are being recorded so that if you ask a question, this will be part of the recording and will be released on the YouTube channel. Um, so people can have some time to find the raise hand button. I will start with a question of my own. It's just a curiosity. Um, I was wondering across the four different locations um, where you got the terms from, uh, is there much variation between the, the the names you find for plants. So for example, if there's a single tree, uh, would you find different lexical items in different locations or are they much the same across locations? Mm, if I answer that quickly, uh, uh, the difference, the obvious difference is between Dunduhi in Hadza and the rest of the Hadza. Mm, yeah, I would say that. Because as I showed you an example, Gijajako, that is how they, they call it in Dunduhina. So it's Gijajako. But when I'm Mongoamono, it is Kijajako. So I see the Gi, Ki variation is a result of the um, regional settlement. And there are names of plants which are available in Dundohina, in the western part, which are not available in the eastern part. Names will not be available in the eastern part. And maybe I can see one quick example. I didn't expect this question. Oh, another example is, Billy C. Apple, the B. Billy C. Apple in, uh, uh, in Dundohina, in the Western Sukuma land, in the Sukuma land, and it is uh, Billy C. Apple in uh, Eastern Hadza. But when I say Eastern Hadza, I, I, I usually refer to Yeda Chini, 
uh, and the Mongo Amono uh, speakers. So the variation is, is there with sound system. But I have not looked into that yet. And um, yeah, uh, a name, a variety of acacia, which is available in, in Kipamba, was not identified in Yaedachin and Mongo Amono. So the name is there in Kipamba, but the name is not there uh, uh, in Yaedachin. If I can call that name quickly. Uh, I cannot remember the name now quickly. Perhaps I'll remember the name uh, as we go. Great, thank you. And then I saw a hand from Martin Maus, which I'll ask to unmute. Thank you, uh, Amani. This is really fascinating. It's wonderful that you collect all this data. I have uh, two remarks and a, and a, and a question. The, um, you asked us about uh, for uh, feedback on, on the terms for that folk taxonomy. And yes. I find folk taxonomy very difficult enterprise. And I, I think that, that uh, quite of some publications there of Heine and, and Ligier is something different, is actually how people in their local languages deal with the taxonomy that they learn in school. Uh, whereas true folk taxonomy would be how the people would talk about the flora in, in, in their own terms. And, and very few languages have uh, have a equivalent for life form. The, the English word plant is, is a lexical innovation in English as well. So um, I, I, cannot, I, I, I cannot give you feedback on the folk taxonomy because I, I think that is a very difficult thing to do. But I find it very interesting all the, all the data that you collect and, and that you manage to get, uh, yeah, to, to get scientific names for them. Sometimes about the this my second remark then about the the contact phenomena. So of course I only I only looked at the Iraq, uh, and um, I didn't I didn't uh, notice any uh, Iraq words in in all your uh, uh, names. So for some of them you you propose maybe Iraq, but there I I have I don't have a similar word in in the dictionary from uh, Marta and myself. So um, it would be nice if you, if, if you suggest these loans to give the word also in the source language and, and their meaning. Because um, what I see with the loans in Iraqu is that maybe they sometimes uh, take the term from another language, but then they use it for a different plant that is not exactly the same. So that 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 would be uh, and like for the hangako for the, the the maize, of course for the Iraqu maize was also a new thing. So they simply they call it aito, which actually means flower. <laughs> they just call it after the flower because of the the shape of the top of the of, of the maize. But my question is about uh, nicknames. So that is something that, that really intrigues me. The, uh, the Iraqu, they have funny names for some of their uh, plants. They will have a, a sort of official Iraqu name, but then to make fun, they will have names like toothbrush of the hyena or toothbrush of the elephant. Um, do you find any of those kinds of names among the Hadza? No, no. Uh, thank you for the observations, and uh, I'll struggle with that to give uh, original names. Mm -hmm. But before I answer the question, in one of the publications about medicinal plants of uh, uh, of Iraq, or someone did research in, I think, in Buru, I don't recall the name, but I saw them having the name Makalid. Makalit, we said, oh, but Makalit is available in, in Hadza. 
but since the researcher was not a linguist, maybe he was provided, she or he was provided with that name. Then I put a question, is Makalit um, Iraq by origin? Makalit, Makalit. I will check for you. I will, I will follow that up. Because yes, of course, I mean, I didn't get all the words. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, thank you. But that now I received from a third, a third, yeah, I'll say a third party, someone who was interested in plant utility, medicinal plant usage amongst the uh, uh, societies in the in Mburu. And one of the uh, vernacular names that publication provided is Makalita with a Q, Mak, Makalita. Yeah. And they are saying they highlighted that is Iraq, but yeah. Thank you. I will check it. Yeah. On the funny names, no, 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 I have never thought of this before. And thank you for uh, highlighting this. I have not checked that. Uh, so if I go again to the uh, uh, Hadza field, I'll try to figure out um, which name is actually, which name is, is not. Because thank some you. of the plant, plant names one plant name, uh, one plant species will have two mm, or, or three names. Yeah. And I have to ask myself why two or three? Could be a dialectical variation, but mm -mm. say I go to Pamba and one uh, and two names are provided for the same tree. Why should that be? Maybe one is that so this kind of the nicknames provided to plants is, yeah, is, is a maybe. phenomenon uh, you have uh, observed in Iraq. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So I'll have when I go again into the field, I'll have an open mind yeah. uh, on the yeah the extra names I obtain for. Thank you. Plants. Then I see that Bonnie Sons has her hands up as well. Hi, thank you so much, Amani. I know how much hard work this is because I tried to get as many plant names as I could. And I, in fact, I was looking at that Boschia angustifolia because I said, I never got that word. That's interesting. Um, but I, and also Kirk didn't get that word in, in his dictionary, but it is in Dowdy Peterson's word list. So I'm wondering if you have access to that. Uh, here's the reference. Which one? Dowdy Peterson. One? It no, no, I have a book by Peterson. Yeah, that, what is the, na the name of the plant? Uh, the uh, Pisilico or Bilis? Pis uh, <laughs> Actually, uh, Bilis, yeah. yes, I'm yes. glad you mentioned it in the chat because he spells it with a P and you spelled it with a B, but you mentioned that that one is actually pronounced differently in the different areas. Yes, yes. This is, this is yeah, the because book. Because that is an important tree, Biliciaco. It's an important it, it, tree for medicine in 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 uh, Dundohina, and it is left even in the uh, places where they clear farms. They leave that tree uh, because it's also useful amongst the skuma. So, so it's a beautiful book, and I I'll just want to make sure that you have his word list, and because he also gives Latin names, so it can be very helpful. Um, one comment I wanted to make is. You have that the, book was by Peterson. Sorry, sorry, I, I cut you short. Is that yeah, and unfortunately, it's it was a two hundred dollar donation to the 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 charitable. Uh, no, no, I have I have a copy. I have a copy. Yeah, it goes for fifty thousand shillings in Tanzania. And they have a copy. Thank right. you. Right, yeah. but the plants are on. Um, well, I can find they're at the end of the book. The plants, but he has yes. quite a lot of them. So. I noticed that sometimes you have ako and sometimes you have ko, and the ako is the copula. So I was wondering if you had a way of, it seems, or perhaps most of the time you have the ako form. And I wondered if you would consider, so like bilisiako is, it is bilisi, it is a bilisiko. If, mm -hmm. if um, you might think about either always including the copula or not including the copula. I suppose when people tell you this is Belisico, they'll say Belisiaco. Uh, okay, to many, this is Belisico. Right, right. So the is word, the to be, the copula is in there with the ah that's, or if it's a masculine plant, it is just a long ah at the end or a ya. Yeah. Um, but it seems like you have, 
a lot of codes in the trees. Did you notice any gender differences between um, bushes and trees or other plant forms? Because with the Sandawe, uh, personal names, boys have tree names and girls have bush names. So that would be interesting if that kind of gender similarity were shared. Or do fruiting yeah. trees tend to have the feminine or I don't know. It's it's another aspect to consider looking at. Uh, 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 again, are, are you done? Yes, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, may I say quickly on, on gender, uh, as we talked the other time, the, the tree will be feminine, okay. the product will be masculine. I see. So we have a lot of core for, for trees, but their fruits will be feminine, uh, will be masculine. Uh, that observation, and you heard it when I presented it the other time, and that pattern is there. and. Uh, yeah, you can make a statement or a conclusive statement. In most cases, you might have a feminine tree name, but its products, fruits, will be masculine. And when I was checking the balance between the masculine and the feminine names, I think it's 50-50. I won't say all the trees are uh, 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 masculine because they have put examples which are many examples are feminine with the core maybe during my selection uh, 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 I selected badly but I shared I think with Andrew uh, Harvey and um, Richard when we were planning for this talk the, the, the volume so I can send it email it to you a PDF to you so that you can see uh, how I uh, listed the names and the gender differentiation. And uh, towards the end, I want to indicate gender in the names of plants, maybe in uh, another chapter uh, or towards the conclusion of the book, so that people should be aware of the name of the plant, the name of its product. If a medicine is, is, is a name, is it feminine or masculine? Although I don't have names uh, uh, mainly. But I'm still struggling with the uh, coupler, uh, so it's the coupler, if you are asked to put a coupler amongst the hearts, will it be um, yako, wako, or ako? So one way to uh, get it without the copula is if you put a word like bahia, here is a, or bayako before, mm -hmm. it's like bayako bisilia, bisilico. They would tend to, if you have the copula oh. on this bahia word, then they might mm -hmm. not put it on the, the noun itself. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, I'll, uh, yeah, and thank you again for the way the hearts are characterized or these under characterized names or put assigned names to men and women, male children, female children, when they use plant names. That but also the studying how the loans are incorporated in the gender system could be a, a different aspect to look at loans of uh, uh, like for plant a, names when a word is borrowed from sukuma how do they decide it's masculine or feminine is it uh, yeah uh, oh how how they decide yeah yeah oh okay but there are always most of them i check they don't have call yeah i would see i would see with the increasing number of data of plant names i'll, I'll see that and thank you but that was very exciting to see the Hadza loan into Sukuma. I'll just leave, I'll just leave with that. <laughs> to me, it is easier to you uh, to uh, stage the Dundohin Hadza because of the my Bantu uh, uh, yeah exposure to my Bantu. Maybe now it will be easier for me to study the Hadza with the Toga, the Hadza and the loans from the Toga. But it will be problematic for me to go into Iraq with my um, uh, sh uh, sh short bow set back in the master of Iraq. So, yeah, I find it easier to identify Skuma names because they are Bantu, or Nisan's names because they are Bantu. And they will have an open eye on the assigning of loans of plant names into gender the gender system of Hatsa. Thank you for that. 
Then I see that there is a question in the chat uh, from Michael Karani, who asks, he wonders if you ask the Hatsa a question on how they start using a certain plant for medicinal purposes. Is it that they were told by their ancestors or elders? Uh, is there a trial and error cases in using some plants of, to treat uh, some illnesses? Oh, oh th thank you for that. Uh, 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 my colleague, uh, Mike Mugeja, uh, is studying the folklore of the Hadza and in, in, in the songs of the Hadza, some of the songs, which are fewer, and in some of the mythical narrations, it's like they talk about someone, an elder person who went into the forest and he found two snakes biting one another. And in a way, one snake fall down dead and the other snake would run into a tree, pick either a leaf or a bark and feed the dead snake and the snake would rise up again. And they will continue, snakes will continue fighting. It's mythical, but it looks like to me, what is this that they don't recall as to when they acquired the, the utility of uh, plant names. So that is one approach. How do they learn the usage of uh, medicinal plants? And if they learn the usage, how do they pass the information to the next generation? Mm, that is the uh, activity that um, Mike Mgege is doing. And we had a draft of an article we shared in the department. We received a lot of challenges, so we are readjusting. And seeing to it, uh, uh, to keep, we keep on learning on how the hearts acquire the knowledge of um, medicinal value of plants and how they pass it to the next generation. Maybe we are have, uh, uh, approaching it from a wrong um, angle, using the folklore um, and the narrations they offer. Maybe we are on a bad track. But I find it difficult for me to ask, say, Catalina, um, how did you learn the usage of this plant? I should say, oh, you in Ajurikana, that one is known. It's like it's an obvious uh, theme. So I think we will need assistance here. We are in trouble. Um, I see there was a question by Rona Kiesling, who I will ask to unmute. Um, okay, Amani, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for, for your talk. Uh, three little remarks. Um, uh, first of all, I uh, kind of follow up to what Martin said on folk taxonomy. Maybe you mentioned uh, that you had discussions with the Hadza and maybe it's possible to get clues from them, uh, from these discussions when you check on the defining criteria that they use when it comes to uh, categorization of uh, individual, well, uh, generic names into what you uh, give us here as life forms. So that was one, uh, well, methodological uh, issue. And uh, I don't know if you, uh, if you've done that, or if it's, uh, if it will be effective in the end, but it, of but I'm aware that it takes a lot of time and energy, of course. And uh, the other uh, remarks are details on or observations on names. Basically, it's about the shrubs. Um, if you uh, have that slide ready, the uh, shrubs, there, were there are two uh, names. First of all, yeah, the third one, Gida Laisha, uh, that actually looks suspiciously it looks like a datoga word by virtue of the initial gid gid gida or something like that although i have difficulties to etymologize the uh, the second part then but i would have to look at the data maybe uh, it's worthwhile to look into that for an etymology that's uh, rather on the Datoga side. But of course, it doesn't exclude that it's ultimately from Datoga, but it might have gone through Iraq 
Um, and this seems to hold for another one uh, that is the uh, the first one, which looks like uh, uh, at least it strikes me as similar to Bimbila, which is Iraq and means uh, germinated grains. But if for getting the the da there, it must it must have gone through a uh, datoga. So uh, the purely on formal grounds, you would you could argue that it's uh, it derives from Iraq Bimbila, and then it has gone through datoga Bimbilida, and then it has from there it has been adapted to Hadza, maybe. That's a, but that is only very uh, well based on formal grounds and. Um, but maybe it helps to figure it out. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you for uh, uh, Aisha. Uh, and I think maybe here, Bonnie Sans will help us with the end part uh, with the bimbi leader. Uh, so it's a bimbi leader uh, marking the masculine bimbi leader, bimbi leader. In Dundu Hina, they prefer using ha, 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 right? Mm, which I find it, it reads like ah, ah in, uh, in uh, Eastern uh, Hadza. Mm, yeah, uh, I think um, I concur with your uh, mm, observations on Gidalaisha, which will be Gidalaisha, yeah, Gidalaisha, but it will be Gidalaisha, maybe Gidalaisha in Hadza. Oh, sorry, in Datoga, Gidalaisha. And with the Geda, yeah, reading through the thesis by mm, mm, Michael Kuria the, with the, the analysis of Git, yeah, that typically gives a sign of the source. And Bimbil, Bimbil leader, yes. Thank you for that. But now with the clues on the criteria used to classify plants, oh, oh yeah. Uh, mm, mm, that one I won't say I had gathered enough uh, 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 statements to provide an authoritative uh, uh, claim because now the other time I was wondering how are the plants named, yeah, parts of the plants name, and young speakers could not list all the plant name, parts of the plant, and the classification what I have now would always either be grass and useless or useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So utility is also central in yeah. deciding of about, course. yeah, yeah. So it's, it's utility is useful. Or is it a shrub mm, that grows on another shrub or grows on mm, hilly tops? Yeah. yeah. But maybe there's a term for, um, for for plants for which there's a use and mm. others which have no use i don't know that might be another um classifying criterion which uh, could be lexicalized within the language yes yeah 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 yes okay <laughs> i have to think and see okay thank Check you words. yeah yes thank you too Oh, I see that Bonnie has since raised her hands again. Hi, just another question. So when I tried to elicit words, I had a field guide which had lots of pictures of plants in flower, and I was just told they're just flowers. They're just flowers. We don't care. We don't. Those aren't useful. So what was the what kind of thing made it easiest to identify plants? Would it be the shapes of the trees? Or did you walk around and, and point out trees or have people point out trees and bushes to you? Or what, what, for people working on other languages, what would you say is the, the most helpful? Mm, uh, well, with the Hadza, since I had experience that they have several names and, and even for animals, they have several names. So I, I would walk with them into the bush and identify name after name. Ah, sorry, plant after plant. And while we walk, uh, I should also highlight here that a number of plants were not identical to any names, had the names. So I'll say 
the name for you. They will say, those are just flowers. I was told, oh, that is Moya. Mm. To me, Moya, uh, red like, or oh, I would hear it's like, oh, that is a useless uh, plant and it has no utility. Mawa, Moya, that is the feeling I, I, I got. So, Walking in the Hadza field, if I want to talk about methodology now, it had been easier for me to identify plant after plant while I go around in the bushland uh, with the Hadza people. So I would get names of plants, and if they call utility, they would tell me the utility. And I was lucky, in most cases, I would have two or three Hadza people in one team. We go around, find a tree. I'll take a photo of the tree, the image, and they'll narrate to me its utility, its name and utility. So walking around and gathering information. Uh, but then when I, uh, 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 I think of using a picture method, when I collected a number of images and they had put names uh, for each image and the utility and where they are located, because also, I also want to show the location that this image or this tree is available in Duduhina. Maybe it's not available in Sponga, but in most cases, I find trees available uh, everywhere. With rare cases, there are trees which are not available in some other, other zones. Mm. When I had the names now, I printed the, a draft of the manuscript in a colored uh, 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 color, uh, color printer and went to Yaedachin, uh, Mongo Amono, with these uh, uh, friends of mine. And they had Endeko here. Endeko had worked in the game conservation, so his knowledge is good. We would have some of the botanical names, some I obtained from him. And Mze Athmani, who I assume is elder and has a, a good knowledge of the plant names. When I show images now, they will not always work. They can't, in some cases, they will not see the image of the tree and relate it to the actual tree in the field. Mm -hmm. So images are amongst the Hadza. I don't have a good experience with other communities. Amongst the Hadza, images are not useful, very much useful. They could be useful at a point or so but not always. So I would suggest for smaller communities like the Hadza, walking the bushland could be more useful. But when you work with the, as you know, the um, literacy of the Hadza, um, born uh, the literacy of the Hadza is a little bit lower. But if you work with the literate community, you are likely to use images and the people could uh, relate the image and the, the name and the utility of the plants. So both method uh, approaches are okay, but with the other, I find it going bush to bush will be useful. And I should confess up to this moment, I have not seen a panju, panju coat plant. Mm, I yeah. think I have I a have picture that the... I can send you. Yeah, I have a I'll picture. I'll be very grateful. Yeah, I'll be uh, very grateful. My problem with the bushwalking is, uh, I couldn't tell the difference or they would look the same to me or I was so focused on sort of flower difference. <laughs> so uh, it was my lack of knowledge of the local um, area made oh. it hard for me to do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. with that, yes, when you have a short period of time and you, uh, yeah, yeah, that if you use uh, images, it will be easier to get um, diverse information and in some prescribed uh, period of time. But for me, I go continuously. And, and I if I remember, I'll go Sorry. Yeah, if I remember correctly, that Panjuko is only in one certain area. Yes, they told me it is in Ikideru, which is remote, yeah. In between Kalama, oh, no, no, in between Mangola and uh, Mangola and Tlika, somewhere, they told me somewhere they, they have Panju. Panjuko. Yeah, if, you, if you can wait a moment, I will f find the picture and drop it in the chat so everyone can see. It's a very unusual shape. Of a of the bo the fruiting body or, or the part that's used for poison. 
but the plant is very useful for the making of a poison, the poison they apply on the hunting arrow. Uh, while we wait for Bonnie to put the photo in the chat, uh, I'll just read out that Andrew Harvey uh, replied to this discussion that the use of images is definitely not just problematic for the Hatsa, but also in other communities. So he's had issues using the images in the field when working on uh, uh, with his Gorba uh, colleagues, uh, most of which were literate. Uh, and he feels that a bushwalk is a good strategy for getting these names. Mm -hmm. And Marta chips in that he has this, had had similar problems using images and also did bushwalks. For determination, he used publications by botanists who gave Hiraku equivalents in layman orthography. All right, with that, I think I'd like to conclude the session for today. Yeah, so thank you. I think those are all the questions and comments for today. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page and entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley bibliography. Looking ahead, the next webinar will be on Wednesday, the 10th of March, uh, which will be presented by Lizzie Poole. Uh, and I would like to thank Amani again for his presentation, of course, everyone else for participating today, and I hope to see you again at our next webinar.